Las Vegas, host city to the world. She's pretty at night, lit up. This is the face we put on for visitors. When the sun comes up, down Foremaster, down Las Vegas Boulevard, downtown, the face changes. These faces emerge. People who came here because of the lights and for one reason or another found instead the streets and stayed there. People like Chad, who, when I ask him who he belongs to, answers... Uh, the Earth, I guess? I mean, I don't know. Chad belongs to the Earth, but everywhere he goes, the Earth does not belong to him. He lives on someone else's property. And like as many as five to 6,000 homeless people in Las Vegas, squats on dirt and sidewalks where it's now illegal to camp, to sleep, if there are shelter beds available. That ordinance passed and will be enforced February 1st. People are going to die enforcing this. This ordinance is criminalizing poverty, plain and simple. If you vote yes, shame on you. Take a step and do something and stop talking about it. We cannot have more meetings. November 6th, City Hall and Las Vegas makes the case for the ordinance. Business owners who have had to clear feces and needles before opening their doors. Homeowners who have to clear out homeless camps just to get out of their driveways. Firefighters who have to chase fires in the night set by squatters. And against the backdrop of the city's argument, real human stories. My name is Leah Justine Aird, and I currently reside nowhere. Am I really breaking the law? Am I supposed to follow the law of a city that has thrown me away and refuses to look at me anymore? Ask the mayor and she'll tell you she has looked at homelessness for 20 years without a fix. So she says her ordinance draws the first line in the sand. Her attorney arguing, You don't get a pass from every law because you're homeless. At the center of the law, beds. If people sleep on the street, when there are beds available, they'll be punished. So we tried to count the beds. 300 at the city's courtyard, 102 at Salvation Army, Shade Tree at 204, Catholic Charities, 524, and the Las Vegas Rescue Mission, 150. 1,280 beds on any given night. The city claiming as many as 6,500 people lack permanent housing, so you do the math. Once the beds are full, the ordinance is not in effect, so I ask the mayor, what's the point of it in the first place? But it is done, and I'm so thrilled by it. The conversation is raw right now. Everybody is talking about it. And I say, we fill our thousand. What are you doing in the rest of the unincorporated Clark County? What are you doing in North Las Vegas? What are you doing in any community? Mayor Carolyn Goodman says this ordinance and the deficits in services and funding it exposes sends a message to Clark County, North Las Vegas, and Henderson. It's saying to everybody, yeah, we can handle the thousand. How are you helping with this? The disparity actually has sparked a conversation that you hope will spark some action. I know it will. I asked the mayor about action. The clock is ticking. Citations will be issued in just a matter of weeks. She admits. Everything in this ordinance is still being worked out. Translation mechanisms for reporting beds available and getting people to those beds don't yet exist. That is still in flux. It has to be. So while the details are in flux, the devil of homelessness stays real for Chad and Damon and Georgia and Bob and thousands of others. People with bad luck in Las Vegas. People who live in the shadows of lights that brought them here. We have had meetings for 20 years on this very subject. City Hall and Mayor Carolyn Goodman is at a boil. We kick this down for one more meeting, one more group getting together and having another discussion. We will be here in another 50 years with the exact same thing. It's the same day Las Vegas passed the ordinance that fines the homeless for sleeping on streets if there are shelter beds available. The ordinance, the mayor's answer to her belief nothing of substance has been done for decades to end homelessness in Las Vegas. Take a step and do something and stop talking about it. We cannot have more meetings. This is homeless Las Vegan Victor. He's taking a step on two broken legs. They shattered when he says he jumped off of a pedestrian bridge in Las Vegas. Actually, um, I tried to take my life. Thinking about my life and I was experiencing a whole bunch of, a, a whole bunch of hardship in my life. I've been depressed, I've been down and out. I've been homeless now in the street now for about seven or eight years. I, hit the uh, bottom of the pavement, I hit the sidewalk. 
That was July of 2019, just weeks after lawmakers in Carson City met about a bill the city of Las Vegas believed would raise millions for services and affordable housing to help people out like Victor. We'll get started with Assembly Bill 73. Assembly Bill 73, in its original form of just more than 2,200 words, was designed to raise money through taxes on certain transfers of real estate and a surcharge on sewer service. 25 cents for each $500 of value on real estate, so for example about $150 on a home worth $300,000, and also $25 a year to sewer users. Las Vegas City Council passed it unanimously, but former Councilman Bob Coffin says, Local governments have to come to the legislature for permission to go to the bathroom. It is that horrible. Add to that, the legislature only meets every two years in northern Nevada. The legislature did something to the city of Las Vegas' bill, which I had not seen before in the legislature, and that it was completely destroy it. All of those people heard from me, and not one of them responded. Not one of them wrote back. Not one of them returned a phone call. I don't know if they were hiding or if they were embarrassed. So what happened to AB 73? 82 percent of it was gutted. These lines cross out the city's 2,289 words, leaving a 406-word directive for the county, North Las Vegas, Henderson, and the city of Las Vegas to form committees to have more meetings and to generate more reports. They ignored it. They didn't have to vote for a tax or a fee or anything. They just decided in their infinite wisdom that they wanted to do something else. They wanted to study it. For another two years. We appeared in front of the legislature of the state of Nevada, one of four states in the entire country that meets every other year. We went up there and made an appeal for everyone here in this situation. We got nowhere. We didn't get the help standing up with us from the other jurisdictions. Mayor Carolyn Goodman will not name names on who opposed AB 73 in its original form. Neither will Bob Coffin, but says no punch by the city ever landed. It's hard to punch when there's just air there. They dissuaded people from pushing this bill, and they were doing it behind the scenes. I asked Clark County Commission Chair Marilyn Kirkpatrick about the bill. She says the county was left out of the conversation, and the bill did not favor a regional approach or a focus that her 1.2 million constituents would have wanted. The paying residents of the county would have paid into a system that they would not have benefited from. C correct. But at the same time, it's all the more reason for us to work regionally. And that's what the amended AB 73 does. Each municipality, separate from the other, ordered to produce a report by October 1 of 2020. People like Kathy Thomas Gibson, who work with people like Victor, call AB 73 a missed opportunity. We're not at odds about what people experiencing homelessness need. We don't have a knowledge gap, we have a resource gap. This is why we can't wait. This is why we can't think about it some more. We know what works. What we need is the commitment to invest the resources. Did you kill the bill? Uh, I amended the bill. I didn't kill it. Assemblywoman Dina Neal was not about to let a City of Las Vegas bill designed to pay to fix homelessness in Las Vegas pass in Carson City. She's the name Las Vegas City leaders would not name as to who drew lines through most of their bill. You're naming names and you're saying you're the name. I am the name. I mean, I think everybody's trying to be polite. AB 73 in its original form was a robust 2,289 word plan to raise money through real estate and sewer fees to pay for services and affordable housing for people like Eric, who works but can't afford a roof over his head. Eric, where will you go tonight? After work, I will come back to the courtyard and sleep here tonight. Under the stars? Yes. Eric will have to wait under those stars because of what happened to Assembly Bill 73. Assemblywoman Dina Neal says she's the one who shrunk the bill to a 406-word directive for the county, North Las Vegas, Henderson, and the city of Las Vegas to form committees, to have more meetings, and to generate a report for a region-wide plan to end homelessness and how to pay for it. It was a hard choice. It was. There were people who came to the table upset. I can't believe you gutted this bill. And I'm like, well, I think I'm doing the right thing. Neil says the city's bill didn't have an end date to the taxes and fees millions of people would have paid. And she says it had no specific plan for how to spend the money, even though the bill's language does say 
funding for support services and affordable housing for persons who are homeless. Is that not specific enough? No. Nobody gets to be a hero, okay? All of the entities need to come together. And they are coming together. Neil says Henderson, North Las Vegas, the city of Las Vegas, and Clark County are hammering out ways to be of one mind by an October 2020 deadline. How do you know by October when the report is due that anybody is going to be able to get to one mind on this issue? If you come back to me and say after a year, I don't have, we don't have money, we couldn't figure it out, I'm probably going to have a moment. And so will Bob Coffin, who fought to see AB 73 pass before it got amended. He says while leaders meet over more months, people like Eric could die. We lost about 200 and some people on the streets just from exposure or from perhaps a, an assault, but, but nothing that made the newspapers. So you're saying there's a body count to waiting? Of course there is. And can we afford to wait? No, we cannot afford to wait. I pray that God finds, help find a solution, help the people that are the powers to be to find a valuable situation to figure out how we can do this.